Thank you all for joining. Uh, just a point that uh, this record, is, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, if you follow through the pre-homework and post-homework, as you can see on lower left, I will give out to you a certificate uh, that now you are a certified consultant from Interfaith Saadi. Now it's not a certificate, the paper that it matters, but what you do in the society and makes the society better for all. That's the important point. So uh, I gave out this assignment, Aditi article, those who did not read it, uh, please uh, write me back later on. You don't have to write many things, just one line is good enough. Uh, these are the, some of the views I got it. Uh, people raise more questions that why she could not get out of the spell of somebody who realized the relationship not going for her. So it's a great question why that girl could not get out four years, she realized that it's uh, trapped there. Uh, other, uh, what she and her parents should have done to prevent this uh, from happening. And that's exactly what all of you should think that what, if you were the parents of this Aditi girl, what you would have done, what you would do different now onward. Uh, she, her, she, she's writing that her parents wrote it that uh, for her, it was all study, no fun. And uh, this particular person says, nope, I don't endorse it. Because uh, when you make the child makes all study, 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 and when they go to college and all fun, I mean, they completely go berserk sometime. Uh, also, it's bothering to one person that uh, why this Muslim was really well worse of what is happening in interfaith relationships versus the Hindu girl was completely naive. I mean, that's actually a fact of matter I have seen. And uh, also somebody wrote it that uh, this uh, Aditi made a conclusion that at the end, after all those relationships, she's uh, going for traditional routes and no more prolonged dating and uh, she don't want any more that trauma. Again, that also is not agreeable because who are you married to? you have to go through dating and probably proper knowing who you, who that person is. Even that person may be Hindu. So great question, uh, great uh, suggestions and thank you for joining. Now the uh, training part, again, something about me. I have a PhD in pharmacology. I'm a director of Peninsula Multifaith Coalition. That's the interfaith group here. Speaker at Islamic Network Group, uh, I'm Dharma ambassador, certified person. And uh, I have written a book on Hindu Viva and also founder and also wrote a book on uh, interfaith marriages uh, of uh, interfaith Shadi. And recently I started a new forum, hinduspeakers.org, Hindu Speakers Group, and all of you are welcome to be part of that group. So check it out, uh, hinduspeakers.org. Now, Question is why I'm training you. This is not a normal presentation where you just hear and that's it, I'm done. I heard it, good enough. No, I want you to take... Uh... Now, I have been working on this interfaith work for last 16 years and have guided some 1200 youths, wrote two books on it. And I can say that I have stopped at least 50 conversions, if not 500 conversions. Now, I am 69 years old and uh, I don't know whether how far I can carry solo this task. So now I want you to carry further this mission further. So I have uh, high expectations from you for out of these presentations. Now, also question remains that you may wonder, mm, why do I have to know about interfaith marriages? What do I care? I did a marriage survey and found that 38% of our youths marry to Christian Jews and Muslim in America. I also found that 45% of Muslims marry outside their faith in Islam. But the one major difference is uh, when Muslims marry outside faith, even in America, I don't have the number, probably 90% more, they will want the other party to convert to Islam. So it's possible that for Islam, interfaith marriage is a win-win situation. 
versus for dharmis when they marry they try to incorporate something they try to look for some sharing and all that that's what my observation is now muslims may say that uh, hindus have a class system i find the islam also has a class system and that is uh, the top class is the shia pure muslims and then sunnis and ahmadiyas and all the other kind of muslims then comes the people of book christians and mos are uh, christians and jews lower category goes the hindus and hindus are not totally bad because they are at least some believers the worst is the atheists and lgbtq so there is a clear hierarchy in islam too now some of the terminology it's important to understand people get confused that when you say inter caste that is the gujarati marrying to bengali brahmin marrying to kshatriya when you say inter race that is a black marrying muslim uh, white but we are talking about inter faith now normally inter faith is uh, when a jain marries a hindu that's two faiths that's inter faith but for my objective i'm talking about dharmic meaning hindu jain buddhist sikh marrying to abrahamic that is judaism christianity and islam so that's interfaith the word i will use it in this presentation now there is a clear difference between these two groups of people that abrahamic are their core beliefs are they are exclusivist versus dharmic are pluralist i will come in the next slide what that means a uh, circumcision is uh, very important in abrahamic faiths uh, more in judaism and islam dharmic that's faith that's not a tradition and ceremony is the burial while uh, cremation in dharmic after life uh, abrahamic there is a judgment day so one day this world will completely disappear god will come and judge yes you go to heaven you go to hell so that is very vital teachings especially in islam and judaism uh, islam and christianity versus in dharmic it's all cyclical everything is cyclical incarnation and you will keep on coming back now going back to that terminologies further the pluralism the dharmic faiths are all pluralist what is pluralist pluralist meaning the one who says iswar ala terona there is one god different names how does it matter we are all saying in terms of interfaith marriages the word uh, what i de describe uh, pluralism as when somebody is willing to share two faiths meaning go to mandir and mosque on friday and set sunday go to church whoever the other party is respect each other truly and everything is equality and that's the title of my book share and respect with equality versus the exclusivist supremacist abrahamic faith people in their mind there is only one god and which one is that that's only my god not your god so that's very funny but that's the way they go by and uh, further for that reason what they do is uh, they expect you to convert to its, uh, their own faith when it comes to interfaith marriages now it's not only for uh, they don't only ask for that for uh, dharmics even when christians and a muslim marries there is always a fight who converts to whom but that's something they know for thousands of years uh, that each other's working styles that church definitely helps them out uh, and their imam helps them out versus when it comes to dharmics our pandit doesn't understand what does he mean to marrying to a jew he says i don't know kya shaadi karna hai i mean uh, i will do the shaadi what uh, why are you asking me other questions so there is no support system for dharmic when it comes to interfaith marriages now what are our learning objective because you will be spending two hours here so you what you will gain now it's possible that you may be really thoro hindu or whatever your faith is but uh, when you learn how the other faiths works actually it will make your own uh, belief systems uh it will make you more perfect in understanding the faith and god so that will help learning more about other faiths i will also prepare you 
uh, for variety of interfaith relationship situations. And who knows, by surprise, just like Aditi, one day it could be there right in your own family. And at that time, you cannot go to find out what's, I mean, whatever your knowledge, even if you don't think, immediately it will everything come back to you on that second. And uh, with this, again, as I said, I have very high expectations from you that you will be able to stop. And I'm sure about it, that at least 10 conversions in your lifetime. Again, lifetime is a long, I hope you live forever long. And uh, uh, you have to just look for opportunity, talk to your colleagues and whatever this learning, talk to teenage boys in your neighborhood, whatever this learning. And slowly you will start seeing there is an issue and you will want to continue this uh, knowledge further. So this is not a one stop, it's an ongoing process for you. Now, this is a different approach compared to what you may have seen earlier. Uh, the first is, let's say, Hindu parents, w or what would you have done it? For example, your daughter comes and tell you that, pop, mom, I am uh, in uh, a love relationship, Muhammad, and you happen to be, let's say you are Brahmin or whatever. Uh, all of a sudden that becomes a big fight and uh, it's just, it's totally, wrong approach you end up taking it. So again, we are not doing, going to do like normal Hindu parents may act in that situation. Further, there are a lot of jihadi groups, meaning jihadi groups, they want to help the couple convert and move to Islam. And there are many anti-love jihadi groups, especially in India. They are pressuring the couples to break up the relationship. Now let them do whatever they have to do it. Your objective is not to be one or other side. You are not taking being partial. You are being very impartial as a consultant. Now you are a consultant here. So you cannot be taking a position on it. And uh, this approach will work best in the terms of the other party is very agitated. For example, uh, somebody is already a physician working on their own. You cannot impose them on it. You don't know what you're doing it. Let me tell you what is right. That does not work. So, but if you approach this way to very intellectuals, uh, highly educated professional, our youths, uh, or our even teenagers who don't listen to us. And if you present it this way, it will be more effective. So it's a different strategy. Now you are a consultant. You're not just uh, average Hindu listening or average uh, Christians or Jew, whatever you are, or Jains. No, you cannot decide for the persons, but you have to understand them. For example, if you go to doctor and as soon as you doctor's office, if doctor tells you that, wow, wow, uh, you, have a, you have a heart attack, you're going to, uh, I want to do a bypass surgery on you. He says, come on, come on, doc. You have not even talked to me. I mean. Are you out of your mind? I mean, you will really walk away right away from the office. So it's exactly the same thing. When somebody reach out to you, don't already decide for them what is good for them. But take time to understand them and then only you'll be successful. Be a good listener. Spend 70%, 80% of time just listening. Yes, tell me more, tell me more. And let them speak. Because more they speak, you understand the situation better. And never ever criticize others that, oh, that's, he's a Jew. Oh, that, that means boom, boom, boom. No, you will lose the, your case. The other party will get right away frustrated, walk away. You have to keep in mind that the other party, when they reach out to you, that uncle, I'm in this situation, or consultant, I'm paying you $100 uh, per hour. This is the situation I'm in. Uh, they, that person is already in love relations for one to 10 years with that person. So, I mean, there is a lot of wasted they have it. So you cannot just knock them down. Now, why Hindu parents have failed? The reason being that Hindu parents might, uh, this whatever uh, 16 years of working, I have found that they are not aligned with our second generation, what their expectations and Hindu parents' expectations are not aligned. 
further hindu parents have a preconceived belief that the interfaith marriages are wrong and that's wrong uh further hindus have no knowledge about uh, abrahamics they know that oh they will convert you they will convert you but what does that conversion mean how does it matter what does it mean so you do and that's what we will be doing here you will understand more what does their belief systems and that will help you prepare for it and uh, our approach has to be their parent, hindu parents approach have been very irrational on the issue at hand so we will try to fix it and i hope you will help uh, many other parents to deal with their children better in the future now what is my message what i am here to tell you in nutshell now i'm not here to saying i am for interfaith marriage or against interfaith marriage some people blame me that uh, you are promoting interfaith marriage is way 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 it's not my creation i'm just here to find solutions for those who already married to it now actually i am actually for if somebody wants to change their religion i'm for it you have to have a right to change your religion why why block somebody changing their religion it's beautiful people should do exactly what they want to do so i am for somebody wants to change religion but what i am against is uh, the practice of religious conversion for marriage the practice because it has been going on for 1500 years because you are muslim because you are hindu meaning uh, hindu has to convert that has been the practice we live in year 2021 come on it's time to end this uh, already given practice there is no logic for it who are has a reason who are if muslim can convert to today why not or nobody convert i mean that's my uh, suggestions and i'm as i said i am as my book says i'm for share and respect with equality and that message that's i have covered in book and if you think of it that's american way of thinking freedom liberty equality and justice so it's in line with uh, and if you present it this way to some youths who is uh, 18 years uh, 22 years old in college and american born and all that if you present it this way you will be more you will be able to sell your message a little better it will be more palatable for them so that's my message <laughs> now what we'll do is go through variety of examples because if you see the examples then you can relate it ah now i know what you mean so that will be more effective uh st let's start with four khans sarukh khan favorite one as you can see here that he is doing puja he says uh, my daughter says uh, gayatri mantra i say bismillah meaning he never ask his wife to gauri khan to convert meaning i have see i see lot of equality here he he is pretty reasonable uh try to make some balance out of this interfaith relationship and that's admirable that's my message my hero amir khan uh, he made a statement once that uh, my children will be muslims only if he made that statement if that statement is true what does he mean the your hindu wives like rina dutt was hindu kiran khan you know recently they got in uh, now they got divorced kiran khan and amir khan i mean the wife carries the child for 9 months you are just giving sperm and you are calling my uh muslims only my son that's irrational thinking further if you notice that his children actually all those khan children they are khan, uh, when it's name of the first first name of the child that's always muslim uh his sons uh, ira juniard azad so what i'm challenging amir khan on a statement that are you a male chauvinist or a religious fanatic tell us moving to saif ali khan let's look at first uh, his mother sarmila tagore converted to islam changed the name to begum aisha sultana they are three children raised in islam only that's no equality everything to islam 0% hinduism that's irrational for our sons and daughter as of today saif ali khan 
first wife amrita singh it's a bad example karina kapoor great example i always say follow karina don't make mistake like amrita did what did amrita do what chef said that she, she, he told amrita that she has to fall in line there is a, some kind of line as far chef is concerned muslim hindu so for nika amrita must convert and become muslim that's a, a fanatic kind of thinking uh further the children were named given name muslims names uh, were raised in muslim she uh, amrita singh converted to islam and still what did she got talaq so my point is don't convert to please somebody and follow irrational logics because still in the end you will have a failure so why to bother instead of that why not follow karina kapoor it's possible karina may uh, shaif may have tried the same should the same line karina now you have to convert to islam karina said bumbo bimbo get lost i don't believe in any line i'm not going to convert that's it simple saif says okay you don't convert then uh, he wrote in one of the in interview that that is the trouble with the religion meaning his religion islam it expects the conversion and i don't buy it uh, anymore meaning he used to buy during uh, amrita times karina made a change great job karina now karina has a son <laughs> taimur ali khan so uh, uh i thought it's a marriage of equality how come uh, now again next generations going to is it a skip generation love jihad meaning skipping karina and next generation is he's harvesting towards islam but then i saw taimur's photo as you can see here on uh, praying to ganesha i mean that's pretty admirable also saif said somewhere that uh, taimur feel like uh, like he is a lord ram uh ram ramayana is very very much like him so it's possible that karina and saif may be exposing taimur to hinduisms and maybe it's a marriage of equality uh so i'm leaving uh, as far saif and karina's to open i still will call it it's an admirable act again now she has a second son already born the name has not been disclosed and i hope and pray that that that's the second name is uh, hindu name pure hindu name like arjun so that way there is the equality there uh, you may say keep dreaming but let's hope so what i'm trying uh, trying to tell any youths that be proud of who you are remain who you are don't fake convert to something you are not because you will have really frustrating outcome in your life like amrita singh now saif sister sohali khan who married to kunal khemu a hindu look at that they have a wonderful married life enjoying the life uh their daughter again name i don't know somehow all those khans the first name is anaya and that's based on a quranic name but at least good that the, the middle name naomi that's a hindu name so they try to find some balance even though uh india is a patriarchal society meaning the father should be deciding the first name of the it it should be the father's uh, religion should be the first name but uh, here at least the middle name is so somewhere it's close the important is uh, this uh, anaya naomi can sing gayatri mantra beautifully I, i saw the video really impressive and she ties rakhi on taimur so i take it this is really marriage of equality no religions conversion is an admirable act that's my bottom line message now <laughs> fourth khan yusuf khan or you know dilip kumar why he played polygamy to understand that question uh, answer is because india allows muslims to convert a uh, muslim to have four wives simple if you take the similar example comparable example abitab bachchan he could have also performed polygamy you know silsila and uh, rakhi love stories uh, being going on 
but he did not one of the reason being it's not legally allowed so my message to anybody don't register your marriage by the islamic marriage law instead of register your marriage by special marriage act if saira banu heard my message and even though both are muslims if she registered first by special marriage act their marriage and then had the nikah she would not have this pain and suffering in her life that somebody else came second wife came in and it was really horrible even dilip kumar said in biography that that was a major mistake of his life that he married to somebody else meaning by not special marriage act saira banu actually hurt dilip kumar too and he is regretting so for everybody's win win situation that uh, never ever register your marriage it according to the islamic law don't fake convert instead of if you are interfaith marriage register marriage as a special marriage act in india or uh, other places so that's a take home message from here so bottom line is hindus have nothing 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 to gain by converting if you don't convert look at here oh, they're having can't having great wonderful life that's life you should be dreaming about versus what do you gain if you convert first of all the guy will wake you up at 5 o'clock in the morning come on namaz time namaz time you want to sleep nope you have to perform namaz several times a day he may put you in burqa as we said he may put three more additional wives next to you are you ready to be one of the fourth and uh, talaq 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 uh, according to once you register your marriage by by islamic marriage act that means the male has a dominance uh, any time there is a problem in your married life you will have to go to not indian courts or neutral court you will have to go to an islamic court an islamic court mulla will be sitting and making a decision for your marriage situations and they will be for towards the husband side so if you are a girl forget it that's not an option maybe if you are a hindu boy and you want three additional wives that's an option like dhamendra did it but uh, so bottom line no conversion is an admirable act uh this conversion practice must end and must end now that should be the message getting all over and now so now if you have a son or daughter you raised really nicely you did every day puja aarti or whatever your faith is and you followed it why they convert uh, when you go to college like that aditi example uh, she got into situation so to understand that let's look and as a consultant also you have to they have the background that okay what has gone through in their mind in college you have to understand and uh, to think a little more critically a particular situation so hindu told that iswara uh, la tero naam we are pluralities we are secular there is one god how does it matter so your son or daughter left the college with the thinking ground is flat everybody are on one ground sitting there okay no difference between us and then the other party comes and uh, they say you are sitting in the college dome and the discussion goes oh there is one god why they are fighting israeli palestinians oh, in god that's nonsense i agree one god why to fight in name of god very true and then uh, sometimes the other party plays sympathy game for example in america muslim will say that you know this donald trump is really our life really horrible uh we are jews uh, i mean we we had uh, holocaust uh very bad which i agree i mean i'm not taking away anything from it it's a painful situation but the thing is because of this sympathy game the hindu get trapped into it and they feel fall for it that oh no i feel really bad for you guys i mean uh, should not have happened and they create sympathy for them or for their causes and then the other party sometimes spend 10 times more money and they gives absolutely relentless love, love and that's what they were crying for the hindu girl probably dated uh, five other hindu boys and uh, they really did not give them a damn or says this is a real love i mean true true love she's finding and ah oh, this is the life dream come true 
Okay, now the discussion goes in the second gear, uh, the relationship goes in the second gear, and that is uh, once they know that they fall for it, uh, then they are sitting and who is God? And you know, unfortunately you ask any Hindu, especially Hindu boys and girls, or even anybody, who is God? They cannot articulate in one minute who is God concept. And then uh, the other party will say, oh, you don't know, right? Why don't you go explore your own faith? So they never visited Mandir. They go to Mandir and they see some aunties pouring milk on Shivlinga. Auntie, 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 what you doing? What, what, what is auntie bowling? You did this milk. Uh, Bhulenath will do everything nice for you. I mean, that's not the answer that uh, this Hindu was looking for. And then they realize Hinduism is nothing wishy-washy religion, something uh, hoax there. And then uh, they created, so basically the other party created holes in the Hindu thinking system. Uh, they, I mean, many Hindu carries, uh, has a carried low as self-esteem as a Hindu anyway. And then at the last second, the party will say, you know, I love you, everything is great, but you know, I cannot marry you because of, it doesn't matter what, convert, convert, convert. So now what Hindu will do? they will sit home and think, you know, uh, uh, you know, I believe in so many God and uh, actually I'm a, a true pluralist, Jesus, Muhammad, uh, Torah and uh, Mahavir and Buddha and all of them are God. So how does it matter if I accept one more? Very true. So they accept one more. What they don't realize that they are not accepting one God, but they are giving up all other gods. The Muslim party is saying there is only one God and that's my God, not yours. God. So you got to remove all other gods. Then only you can be a Muslim. So that's where the trap comes. Now, this is to ask somebody to fall in love for one to 10 years. And then to ask for religious conversion is a ugly form of uh, religion a religious proselytism and that's injustice to the victim party and that's what I'm saying. This is not a justice. We need to do something about it. Now, as I said that Hinduism is difficult to understand why we cannot articulate Hinduism in one minute versus uh, you ask any Muslim what is Islam about? They will say boom, boom, boom. You ask Christians, church, God and they will say boom, 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 boom. Why? Why there is a confusion? I would say that uh, don't blame Hinduism, don't feel, uh, I mean, uh, anything less for the religion because that's where it is. Why it has to be, be nice and crisp to be explained that yes, this is a cell phone, this is it. Uh, there are many other situations and to explain that I'm using Malhotra Ji's logic and that is uh, Hinduism is comparing to the vast Amazon forest giving out a uh, uh, lot of oxygen, nice green lush uh, forest versus uh, American farm. Again, nice, big, huge, very productive, very efficient and all that. So I'm not saying one is better than others, but they are is their, their own place. Who is the founder of the farm? Yes, you can have a founder. Hinduism, you don't have a founder. Farm can have a beginning and end. So there is clearly a genesis. On a particular day, God made uh, this world in uh, six days and rested on the seventh day. And on judgment day, again, everything will disappear. You, me, self, this computer, everything will disappear completely. It will be vacuum, as I said, you, there'll be heaven and people will be suffering in heaven and hell again. And that's a judgment day. Now there are clear rules. Thou shall you do this and not. Hinduism has nothing like that. There are dharmic guidance here, there. You think and do what you want. There are clear hierarchy. God, Jesus, uh, these uh, scriptures, apostles, uh, church, the priest, uh, and then you. So there is a clear hierarchy, the Pope and all that. Hinduism, your relation to God is directly you and God. You don't need the Bible. I don't need the Gita. 
or uh, guru to go to heaven. You can go by yourself. Just connect with the God. Uh, further, in Abrahamic faiths, many Hindus feel that uh, the message is more uniform message. For whatever reason, uh, yes, Bible and Quran are clear books for them. Hinduism has so many books, so many ways explaining so many things. And yes, that gets confusing. And the first in terms of interfaith relationships, is the last one and that is the others are always considered as a threat because those are exclusive supremacist faith we are the superior all others are inferior so in corn uh, in farm example a corn in weed field uh, wheat field is a weed and weed in corn field is a weed and then the lion oh, of course that's hindus they are weed will always Versus that's not the kind of concept uh, in Hinduism. It, there is the in Amazon forest, there is a big forest there, I mean, big tree there next to the dandelion says, well, I want to start, uh, I, can I make living here? Big tree says, go ahead. If you can survive in these ecosystems, make my day. I don't have any problem. So there is a clear thinking again, I hope uh, you don't take away saying that I'm trying to say one is better than others. No, nothing like that. But it has its own place. And that's the reason sometimes Hinduism is difficult to explain, but uh, it has its own beauties and weakness just like anything else. Now, important question is why Abrahamic asked for conversion? So now that's something you have to really understand deeply, pay good attention to it. Assume you are in a college, you paid uh, $2,000 fees, and now you are learning Abrahamic Faiths 101. God, earlier there was nothing, nothing, and God created uh, for son, and in, uh, on the sixth day, God put Ad Adam, and then rested on uh, the seventh day. Now, that means this what do you learn in Darwin's law of evolution that we were monkeys and all that? That's irrational. Many Christians will not believe in or want, will not allow to, will not even want to teach in their schools. So Darwin's laws of evolution is out. Nope, it was Adam who came first. And you know, Eve was created, the lady was created from Adam's rib. So it, actually woman came from man. And they were innocent, you know the story, they ate the apple and then they carry the original sin. So you, me, Mahatma Gandhi, everybody are, as per their beliefs, they are carrying the sin, the original sin or everything is, uh, you are still a sinner unless you are a baptized one. And the stories, you know, there is a Noah's Ark uh, and everybody were saved. And then there were many uh, apostles in these faiths. And the apostles are not like guru, but uh, they are the people God chose to give them the message. And that could be anybody. And God just decides to give the message and they uh, tell everybody else and they become part of these scriptures. If you do not know, the Muslim Christians and Jews are considered, you may say very in layman's terms, there are three brothers, three brothers of uh, Father Abraham. Uh, and they follow the same scriptures. All those uh, apostles are respected by all this, uh, all three faiths. Abraham in 1943 BCE, uh, that's uh, at that time it was only Judaism was there. Uh, then there was uh, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Moses. Moses is the one who heard that uh, Ten Commandments. Then David, Solomon. Those are all Jewish apostles and also respected by Christians and uh, Muslims also and uh, cited many times in Quran and all that. So it was all Judaism at that time. Jew Jesus was also a Jew. Uh, and uh, he saw there are many Jewish practices and he says, that's not logical. He was a reformer basically. And he tried to make changes and because he was trying to make trouble, that's why he was hanged to death by Romans with the help of uh, Jewish leaders. So 
Jesus was hanged to death on third day. He he was his body was there stored someplace. It was no more. They say uh, Jesus was uh, I mean uh, went back to become a ghost, holy ghost and holy spirit, and uh, went back to God. Actually, Jesus is not the one who started Christianity in zero C or uh, whenever he passed away during his time, but it's a 325, year 325, Nisis Creed, that's where they got together all those stories about uh, uh, from uh, all the way from Genesis to all those they put together and that becomes the Bible. It was voted on what should go on and what should not and that becomes the, now what to do with Jesus? I mean, he's, is it just one of these apostles? They says, no, no, he's something more to it. And uh, this is, uh, or Jesus also says somewhere, he used the word for God, he used the word uh, father. So then it's logical to make Jesus son of God. So Jesus is not a God. Jesus is not just ordinary apostle, but he's a son of God as far as Christianity is concerned. And uh, the naturally uh, earlier Jewish time, the names, God name was Lord God that changed to now father God. So here now father and son story is going on rampant for another 300 years later after Mrs. Creed comes Muhammad in pictures and he was in Kaaba 570 CE. He says, good, wait, our Jewish God what described by all our apostles all along has been Nirankari, no shape, no form, whatever, that's kind of God we have. How come all of a sudden uh, God has now form? It, it, this is like a Hinduism. You could have father, son, daughter, daughter-in-law and godly, all those, I mean, that's going in different directions. So Muhammad put it in Quran or Allah said uh, in Quran that uh, to say that uh, God could have a son is a monstrous falsehood. So between Christianity and Islam, or if, when a Christian and Muslim youth comes to me for consultation, I always raise the question, can you resolve one point? One point, is Jesus an ordinary apostle or a son of a God? They cannot resolve this. On these points, millions have been killed in the history. Because uh, for Christianity, Jesus has to be son of God. If you say he's an ordinary apostle, then what's so big about Christianity is invalid religion. If it's just one of the regular. For Muhammad, uh, for Muslims, they have to believe Allah's word. That is, uh, they cannot tolerate this. Uh, God cannot have sons. That's a monstrous falsehood. And there are chapters and chapters written in the Quran about this one. So this point cannot be resolved between Christians and uh, Muslim. And when it comes to Jews, they do not want to endorse uh, this Christmas and uh, Jesus as a son of God because. That's uh, invalidating Judaism's uh, nirankari, no shape uh, God concept. So point is, they have enough issues within them among each other. And when it comes to Hindus believing in any number of gods, including Jesus and uh, whatever, that's not going to be tolerated to any of those. Ones. So this is very vital to understand. You have to someday, you have to explain it to some youths. Now, you may not know, but the, in Bible and Quran and Torah, there are many things written, which is, I mean, you cannot even believe it. For example, you know 10 commandments. This is the second commandment. And I'll just read for you as is. I'm the Lord, your God. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, uh, whether in the form of anything that is in the heaven above or on the earth that is in water Meaning the Hindu way of praying is absolutely not tolerable. How not tolerable? Look out. God says, I'm a jealous God. <laughs> Remember, this is not a typo. I counted in Bible myself 31 times. It says I'm a jealous God. 238 times it says I'm an angry God. And fear word is used 450 times. So I mean, they mean business. And what? how fearful, jealous God is there? If you meaning Christians or Jews not follow this one or Muslims, then they will punish 
to three to four generation of your innocent children. I mean, you made mistakes and marry a Hindu and did not convert it, whatever. Your three or four generations of future children will be suffering just because of uh, great grand uh, parents' mistake. So, I mean, it's a pretty serious message. Christians' exclusivity. They believe Jesus is son of God and that Jesus is the only way to achieve salvation. You want to go to heaven? There is only one route open to enter to heaven. And Jesus himself says, I'm the way, truth, and life. No one comes to Father, meaning God, except through me. So what does that mean? That, that original sin, Adam and Eve, carried, which all of you are carrying, <laughs> check your back. It may be saying sin, sinners. If you want to clean it out, you have got to be taking deep in that uh, Christian church. So, I mean, I'm just giving you option. It's still choice you have. So, so for them, sin, sin, sin. If you go and at attend the church some days, church service, you should go to church service and attend it. And you will realize that they keep on hammering this, especially the uh, this uh, uh, I guess many many faith Catholic for sure. The sin is very vital for them. So what does he mean? He understood that Mother Teresa will go to heaven. Ha, how about Mahatma Gandhi? And right away, ha, they will, how can they say that Mahatma Gandhi will be going to hell? Now, you have to also understand the, our Hindu mandirs have no control on what you do, what your son and daughter do. But churches are different. Churches are very powerful. To make an example, I'm giving one example from my book, page 97. And I'll request all of you to check, uh, uh, purchase my book and read for more things. What Maya was in love relationship uh, with a Christian uh, in India. And uh, she was very happy. We are very open-minded. Three years, they discuss exactly what uh, they will do it. And uh, she, they were very happy, open-minded. Uh, then finally, the boy asked the parent, Christian parents, they says, you know, better, how about having uh, the church wedding? Because that's our tradition. So Maya says, yeah, no problem. I would love it. Put on that nice white girl. I'll throw that bouquet. Wonderful. So she said, oh, agreed. But then uh, the other party came out, you know, you can have the Hindu wedding you wanted, but you know, keep it a low profile. Keep, nobody should know the Hindu wedding. Can you do it? Uh, Maya says, I, I don't see the logic there, but uh, you know, I will, uh, I will work out something. I'll convince my parents to keep it a low profile one for your love, no problem. Further then church came out and says, you sign this prenuptial agreement. The children will be raised, baptized and raised in Christian faith only. Now she got alarmed. I said, no, 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 we've been dating for three years. We are open-minded. This is not, uh, these are not in my cards. And uh, all of a sudden, why are you dumping on me? So that's time she reached out on my website, interfaithsadi.org and says, admin, why are all those things going on? So I pump her up, that's, you know, forget it. There is nothing you are, this is a legal document. It could put you in a legal trouble in future if after divorce, especially you will not have child custody if you sign this up, never ever do it. So she says, nope, I will not sign this prenatal agreement, do what you want. So finally, the church is saying, not to Maya, I mean, can, they cannot impose on Maya, he is a Hindu, but to the uh, Christian in-laws who are part of that church, coming to church, that they will take away the communal rights, meaning they cannot go to church anymore to get the every weekly blessings. I mean, that's, they've been going for generations to church to get the blessings. And now they'll be kicked out of the church and out of their society. I mean, that's pretty hard. And further, they have a burial site in that church. They want to make sure when they die, they want to go, everybody, whole church, people go, go together to meet Jesus. I mean, that's their life dream and they have a right to believe all those things. And uh, just because Maya does not sign this damn small paper, they have to go through so much pain. So, I mean, there is a, think of it, some, what a little 22 years old girl who cannot explain all those to her parents. Thank God, it's, at least I was here to guide her. But what she will do, oh, I want to go and please those my in-laws. I want to have a nice, happy life. They are really wonderful. They've been 
so decent. I'm already in love anyway. And uh, just because this paper to sign it, I mean, why I want to put my in-laws in so much pain and suffering? Okay, no problem. I'll sign the document and get ever the marital gridlock. That's it, simple. So point is, it is your job to go and convince so many mayas to not do any irrational thing because that will put uh, big trouble to them in the future. And what I'm saying that uh, the control of this religious institute, anybody, including our own Hindus, if some mandir tells you what you should be or should not be doing your son or daughter, and they are dictating the terms, you should have rights. Keep the religious institute out, get the freedom. And that's, I believe, if anybody Christian Jews, Muslims, or anybody atheists uh, listening to my message, I mean, they should feel, yes, this is logical. In 2021, why somebody else, a Pope should be deciding how you will make your married life. Or even a Hindu Pandit, if he makes the term that one, two, three, four things, uh, you must do it, this couple must do it. I mean, come on. So again, let me take a break and tell you that I'm not here criticizing any faith. To make a point, I was in a, a Pennsylvania uh, temple, our temple, and uh, I was passing by. This cop came by to me and says, Kemcho. I said, this white cop, why is telling me Kemcho? So I start chit-chatting. I said, how come, who, who taught you that? He says that my wife is a Gujarati Hindu. And then I said, come on over inside. He came inside all those and he was very impressed. And he says, you know, can I bring my children over here to Sunday school? I said, why not? See, point is, he's a Christian or whatever faith he is following. He's respecting us who we are. I'm not asking him to convert. I don't want him to impress by my faith. I want him to be 100% whoever he is. I'm just asking that uh, just respect us who we are. We will respect you who are. So raise the children however you want it. Take him, him, this, this. And that's only I'm asking for. So I hope I'm not asking too much here. And that's exactly my dream and message to anybody. So now let's switch gears to move to Islam. And as you expected, uh, or I should be expecting, that Quran is a really tough book. And you should read Quran. Uh, if you are ready to read, uh, I will suggest uh, Daud's version. Uh, absolutely super book. It's a small book. Everything is so definitely worth reading. As a consultant, you should read it. Quran says, those who deny our revelations, whatever uh, is in uh, Quran, we will burn them in fire. Once your skin gets consumed, Allah will give a new skin, not out of mercy but they can pour hot scolding oil on you again. So you burn twice, you feel pain twice. Look how mercy less uh, teaching here. Uh, again, I should not say mercy less. Uh, uh, it may have a meaning different things than what I understand here. I'm just cutting and pasting here. So again, I should, I'm sorry, I should not criticize anyone. Further Quran says, low hell damps unbelievers and kill them whenever you find them. Now, the important thing is God could have done all those things. Anybody don't believe, I mean, they could have killed, God could have just not even produced uh, non-Muslim. Why produce even non-Muslims to create trouble? But instead of doing, God gave ultimate authority to Muslims to take over this uh, killing authority. Again, uh, it's listed on my book. I'm just reading and uh, sorry if I did not understand what does this mean. But... Uh, uh, when it comes to interfaith marriages, let's again take one nice example which appeared recently. And I mean, if it came in New York Times, you know, there is a value. If it came somewhere else, <laughs> has no menu. Here, Myra Faduki, she writes this article and if you come across, please uh, read it in New York Times. I tried him, I tried to filter him out, meaning a Hindu was there in Ladarshan. Very interesting story very relevant and you should uh, bring up discussion with who are youths in give this article and ask to rebuttal. So the story is that's a Pakistani girl in love relation with uh, a Hindu boy in San Francisco. You know, it's the most progressive city. 
uh, they were in love relationship during this COVID times, some long time, nine months like that. Now, what is she said on fifth date, meaning after several months, he's telling the boy that you need to understand that only way for our relation to go further is that you have to convert to Islam. Do you know that? That Hindu boy, without understanding, without even taking thinking one second, he says, that's it. I'm for it. No problem. So I mean, Hindu has no problem converting to Islam. No, I mean, he did not even took one second to think as per this article, you can read it. And it's, as I said, that uh, Hindus have no problem accepting another God. I have 101 more, 101. Why not? The reason Qureshi is asking for a Hindu to know, she's assuming that Hindu know Quran 221. And that's why she says, you understand. The Quran 221 says, you shall not wed a pagan woman. Pagan is an unbeliever. You may say even Hindus who are believing in uh, multiple gods. Unless they embrace the faith, meaning Islam. A believing slave girl is better than an idolatrous, though she may please you. So between a Hindu who is pleasing you versus a slave girl who is not pleasing you, Allah is saying better to follow, uh, the better to go with the slave girl. So Hindu status, Hindu girl status or Hindu status is less than a slave. So are Hindu youths in love? Are you willing to accept this Quran 221? Think hard. Further, Quran says that uh, do not maintain your marriage with unbelieving women. So let's say for some reason you got married by special marriage act and uh, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years down the road, all of a sudden now Islam comes in your mind, you start believing 611, that means the Hindu has to convert even after having three, four children. I mean, you have to convert to Islam because uh, 611 says, uh, you, otherwise you have to, you cannot sleep with a uh, non-believing woman, that's Zina. So even you may get uh, talaq uh, after special marriage act after 30, 40 years. I mean, that's, you cannot avoid it. As soon as the party start believing in Quran, that's it, you are gone. So I actually respect Muslims have right to believe all those things. I mean, that's their faith and that's the prerogative. And Qureshi has rights to follow through all those things. Only my problem with Qureshi and all Muslims is why she, for some nine months, she kissed. There was a kissing between them. There was a dancing. They drank wine. That's the non-Islamic things. Further, Qureshi writes in her own article that she had many romantic relationships with uh, Muslims as well as non-Muslims. And further, Qureshi was not naive. She writes in this article that she's aware of prohibition on marrying outside my faith, being a Muslim lady. She cannot marry even Christians and Jews, forget about Hindus. So she knows cultural and faith. So she's very educated, highly educated and aware of it. So she knows all those things. She knows what Islam wants, she wants, and then why she danced, drank alcohol and all that, have romantic relationship. My question to her, have you read Quran 2430? Quran says, and Zakir Naik, our favorite leader, he said nicely that uh, you should watch this video, uh, that you're supposed to lower your gaze and walk away from that situation. So why Qureshi did not follow what Quran says, did not follow 2430, but she's asking Quran 221 and 2430, uh, 6011 to follow through. So I'm questioning Qureshi, are you a love jihadi or what? Are you a Muslim or are you a, here for some uh, higher objective? So that's uh, something you need to challenge any Muslim asking for religious conversion if they did not uh, ask on a very first day before going for in, uh, first day. So let's again move, move, move gears to Jews exclusivism. Uh, Jews 
consider themselves as a chosen people, some exclusivists, uh, and that's why Jews did not try to convert others because they are already in some elite club and you don't want to, I mean, include everybody. Further, Jews will not accept Jesus as a son of God concept. They will not ally the Muhammad's creation. And uh, of course, this uh, for Jewish people, idol worshiping, it's absolutely, absolutely no, no. So if a Hindu is in love relationship with the Jews and you want to put on like in my back, I mean, there are, uh, I even uh, Buddhas and Ganeshas and all those statues, and they may consider that's not intolerable out, everything to be out. Further, Jews have certain practices on uh, breast, eight day, they have a child goes to circumcision. Uh, sometimes there is a superstition that if skin is not cut on eight day uh, with the child, there is some sin, something negative may happen. So, I mean, they cannot. Uh, your uh, father, parents and uh, grandparents cannot wait on the eighth day, the son's skin get uh, uh, removed by bridge ceremony. So that's their exclusivism. Now, again, uh, examples have, I was on an, an US troop, I was in uh, Rushmore, uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, there was a one Hindu lady and uh, some American guy there. I just started chit-chatting in two, three minutes of discussion here, there. You know, that boy told me that uh, ours is not an interfaith marriage. I say, wait, you told you are a Jewish. This girl is a Desi girl. And uh, it's not an interfaith marriage. Can you explain me more? I'm missing something. He says, two years before our marriage, she attended synagogue every week. She read Torah, clearly understood, and by her, by her own choice, she decided to uh, convert to Judaism. And she converted to Judaism, now she was a Jew, and then Jew, Jew got married in the synagogue and got blessed by rabbi. <laughs> I say, who are you kidding to? I mean, uh, if she dated, don't be in a confusion. If she dated a Christian guy, she would have been baptized. If she dated a Muslim, she would have been a Muslim today. And if she dated a Bodhi, Buddhist, she would have been Buddhist. I mean, she just doesn't have, she doesn't care to accept whatever it is. Point being, if you just keep your eyes open, get into these kind of discussions with people and you will re really, that will help you understand the situation better in life. Like I, I mean, you, I'm on vacations and immediately you get in discussions and you find out uh, the thinking process. The, again, all Christian Jews and Muslim always make a claim that the Hindu party converted by their choice. We, we don't force them. We offer them all the knowledge they compare to faiths and, uh, they decided, yes, the other one is better. So that's a problem. And as I said, Hinduism is like a Amazon forest jungle. I mean, so they go to Mandir and nobody can explain them properly. And that's why they say, yeah, other makes sense. Why not? Let's try out, try out something wrong. There is no punishment to be apostasy like you quit Hinduism, who cares? So that's why it's your job to make sure you convey the message to others. Now, there are not two marriages are same. So you cannot use the same stick for everything. To make a point, it's a, I'm taking Jew Christian marriages. So we are some outsiders here. Chelsea Christian, Clinton, Clinton uh, married to a Jew person. And still today she is a Christian Methodist. And wonderful, that's in line with my message. She's sharing the faith and they are still happy. Nothing wrong with that, I see. Ivanka Trump uh, converted to Judaism to marry Jared Kushner. I don't know, maybe Donald Trump, so deal into it, whatever reason, and uh, she's a Jew today. Uh, that's not something I endorse, but she's happy, so I'm happy. The first scenario is this one, and that's what exactly all Hindu boys will, uh, Hindu girls are, this is a typical story, Hindu boys, Joseph, a Christian, was in love with Rebecca, a Jew. 
Rebecca says, uh, you have to convert to Judaism if you want to marry. Joseph says, Rebecca, I love you. I'll convert, no problem. Rebecca pushed the button a little further. Child will be Jewish only. Joseph says, just like any other Hindu boys. Rebecca, I love you. Child will be Jewish, no problem. Now they had a child. Uh, and then every day keeps on uh, going on that uh, Judaism, 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 Judaism. And then this Joseph all of a sudden wake up, wait, I'm a Christian. Why not uh, my child be uh, baptized? So he took his daughter to a church live on uh, uh, TV and uh, she put a dual label on the child. Now this dual labeling, this labeling is very vital for these Abrahamic faiths. You have to have a clear stamp that you are this or you are that. You are white or black. You, there is nothing like Hinduism as everything is in gray, either lighter gray or darker gray. That's about it. There is never clear white and gray. versus here. So you have to have a clear stamp that you, once you are a bridge ceremony, meaning you cannot have a second stamp on it, baptism. You pick, and that becomes a ma major legal battle and all that. Mm -hmm. My message is that all Hindu boys thinking just like Joseph and what they are doing is actually they are fake converting. They are not really truly having a faith and they believe that Hinduism is a, I don't have any more faith. I feel the faith in that one and they fake convert. And that's what definitely stop fake conversion. And that's your job to stop this such fake conversion. Actually, you are helping these people like Joseph from getting into legal trouble. Because uh, what's the sense uh, fake converting to Imam, Rabbi to go and fool them, to fool God, even though you don't have uh, faith into it? I mean, that's the thing. It's just going to create more trouble in married life. So if you stop these fake conversions, uh, definitely uh, that's an issue. I will get back to questions. Uh, so if you can hold on to your questions, I would appreciate it. So now what can we do about expectations? Now uh, I'll be done probably in 10 minutes. So I know it's going long. Uh, what we can do about expectations? There are a variety of things, variety of steps we can take it. Now, long before marriage, again, I will go very shortly to here. I met uh, Swami Dayan and Saraswati Ji, and he just says, you know, just you be a true Hindu. That's about it. If you do it, uh, for example, you treat your wife well at home front. Uh, I am saying that uh, don't create the image uh, with children that you are a racist. Don't complain about other faiths. They are bad and all that, unless there is a clear logic. And uh, don't assume your children will marry in your own faith. Assume that they will not marry. And that's when you will have a better outcome. You are better prepared for the day. On the day is definitely a very big problem. Mom, I'm in love with Mama. Ma, Dad, I'm in love with Jennifer. And then normal parents will make a irrational comments. Like, uh, I told you not to marry interfaith. Muslims are bad. Christians are bad. Without any logic, they don't know what they are anyway. And then... Instead of that, I'm saying be realistic. As I said, listen to your child. Uh, actually, I'm saying the, just uh, say that, okay, you want to marry Muhammad? No problem. Chalo badi dham dum se sadi karenge. And that child will say, mom, dad, you are saying, yeah, why not? What's wrong? I trust you, beta. I know you must have made a right decision. So no problem. Then later on, go meet all the relatives. You go to their mosque put on the biggest bindi and uh, walk there, put on the nice sari and go with a smile. What will happen in mosque? As soon as you enter, enter mosque with your daughter, the imam will say, ladies, go in the back. You cannot see me. You have to be in a separate room, not in the main room. And right away, your daughter will say, wait, 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 wait. In our mandir, we always go together. What's the nonsense is here? Again, still you don't make faces. Look, look, I told you so. No, don't act smart. Just, I don't know. It's your faith. You decide. So, what I'm trying to say is uh, in this situation, just collect facts, collect facts for three, four months without uttering a word, keep watching. And once you have all the, uh, just at the end you propose, beta, I believe in share and respect with equality. We want 50-50. I don't want 51%, uh, no, 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 that's it. Nor I will tolerate 49%.
and especially raise no BBS. Remember the word BBS, the religious labels, bris, Jews, baptism, and sahadat, alala, illala, illala, mamadur rasulullah. That means uh, if you say that, you become Muslim, uh, you become uh, uh, Muslim today. So those labels are so vital for them and propose what sense this label why instead of that why not uh, be like barack obama his uh, father was muslim mother was christians and uh, he respected both and as an adult he did make his own decision uh, to be whoever he wants it so that's what my message is that interfaith child should have liberty to be whoever he or she wants to be you cannot put liber label on some just born child that this child is this and that. It's an interfaith child. Teach them from both scriptures. Let them make their own decision. I hope uh, my message is uh, logical. I mean, if it is not logical, explain me what other things you will like. It. So if you don't remember anything, anything, this no BBS is the message. After marriage, again, I will go very quickly. There are, let's say you are a, a, a Brahmin, your uh, Daughter is start doing uh, namaz in your own home, start wearing hijab and all that. Swami Arumuga says, don't worry, still keep on loving, giving the same love and uh, ultimately they will come back to senses. So that's my message to you. Keep giving love and read all those things later on. What mandirs can do, again, if you are part of any mandir, if not join them and help mandirs. There are many things mandir can do and you may help out uh, being a, become a consultant on the mandir, set up a table. Here is a consultant service for mandir. So mandir can do a lot. So this is my last slide. What is my take home message? And then we'll go through a lot of questions, answers, uh, because that's where you will understand a uh, lot more. So what did I told you? Don't make judgment without understanding. Just example I gave you, somebody entered in your doctor's office and says, oh, you need a bypass surgery. Let me run to uh, by, uh, uh, this uh, surgery room right away. <laughs> it doesn't work that well. Understand the love relationship situation. Take your time to understand. More you take time, more person will wants to talk to you, more faith, uh, trust they will build up. Take three, four months to come to the point. Don't rush up. Uh, and uh, your hitting point should be the exclusivist, uh, whether find out whether the person is exclusivist or very open-minded. You know, I have seen, I would say probably 70% of marriages, Hindus marrying in America to Christians, they are really, really wonderful people. And they have a wonderful married life. I don't have any problem with interfaith marriages. It's not the person who, who you're marrying to, it's what their person has learned from their scriptures. That's the point. And the, to Hindu party, or if you are consulting both of them, uh, make them sit and explain them, what's the science fake converting, like I explained to you. Again, why are you bringing religious institutes in that one? You know, if you become a part of the, if you start listening to church and become part of the church, you will have to pay 38% no, I'm sorry. You'll have to pay three to 12% of your gross income to be part of their church. Are you ready? Do you understand all those things? You know, as soon as you bring up these money points, especially those uh, Indian kids, they will run away. 12% of my gross income, oh, no way. My family income, no way. I'm not going to give you, buddy. So basically convince them out. Uh, don't get trapped into religious institute. Let them make their own decision. Follow pluralism and respect others, equality, Equality is the selling points. Anybody you uh, tell them equality, you says, yeah, sure. I mean, I believe in equality, why not? And the other party, Christian, Jews, Muslim, invariably says you cannot raise children in two faiths because children will get confused. Bullshit. Insist on that, yes, children will be raised in two faiths. You must be, this is an interfaith marriage. And if the other party agrees, you know you are in a very uh, safe territory and there should not be any issue. So that's what equality message I'm here to convey. Uh, my book is there in uh, many places available. Uh, you read my back pages and pretty impressive. I will also sell you this, send you this slide deck. 
So you can modify and present however way you feel appropriate at your own slides and go make presentations uh, all over. So with that, let's uh, go to question answers. Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, rules. Sometimes what happened that in these discussions, uh, Mahindra Jai, yes, you are next. Before that, uh, sometimes what happened that somebody start telling the story and that story goes 15 minutes uh, to tell the story and then others get bored. So let's first part focus on only your questions. You have a question on my presentations or anything and question has to be in 30 seconds. Once we are done these questions, done with questions, then uh, if you want to share your views, uh, you may share it, but make it two or three minutes view, not a long story, just interesting. So here I'm ending my sharing. At the same token, note that this is a recorded session. So if you don't want uh, your voice, uh, your uh, face to be recorded, uh, please turn off your video and ask questions. So you may turn your video off if you like. I'm turning off the sharing and uh, I'm view viewing you all. So thank you all join. It's a really great uh, you all join. And uh, uh, Mahindra ji, go ahead, please ask the question. So I have two quick questions. Sure. A couple of times you mentioned about having legal ramifications if you convert to some other faith or something like that. Mm -hmm. So could you please elaborate on legal ramification, number one, and number two, in your experience over the past, whatever long career uh, doing these sessions, uh, how do you initiate and how have you been received? I think both are superb, superb questions, superb, superb questions. And both are very valid, very important points when you are consulting somebody. I found that, uh, especially American youths, when they are in love relationship or they are, you are talking about interfaith, bring up the point that what if there is a divorce? All of a sudden they get, to, because you know, divorces are, what is that, 50, 80% in divorce in America. So even though they may not want to listen to you, as soon as you bring up the word divorce and what you have thought about it, immediately they get shaken up. They may not express, but it is. So uh, that's your, point to enter, actually that's uh, how to initiate that discussion. That's the other uh, way to get into divorce questions and explain them. Okay, let's say you agree, you got baptized and agreed to raise children in uh, Christian faith, baptized and, and you signed that prenuptial agreement with church wanted it. Now you are married, wonderful married life, 10 years and uh, marriage did not work out. You, there is a divorce. There is a fierce child study better. They have a big lawyers. You have your own big lawyers and they are fighting and you don't know and remind the child that the, uh, the divorce costs double or 10 times more than the marriage itself. Divorce are very, very expensive and painful, especially if you have a child. So at that time, let's say you are in front of judge. You want to be Hindu. You start uh, going back to Mandir. Your Hindu thing came out. The other party will say, look, better, uh, buddy, you sign this prenuptial agreement. Children must be baptized and raised in Christian faith. You agree to it. Now you are, you are Hindu. You start children, children, taking children to Hindu mandir and all that. And judge may put a story adder that you cannot have anything Hindu in your own home. Remove everything. Somebody will come check your, who knows? Somebody may come and check your room, home that there is nothing Hindu there because you cannot expose them to Hindu. There may be a stay order on you. Uh, and... Uh, I mean, that's a legal trouble. The other interesting thing, you can share it with uh, somebody who are uh, uh, guiding, that legal thing is very vital. For example, let's say you converted to Islam, went to mosque and converted to Islam, Lala, uh, the Imam register your conversion to Islam, and you are coming back. And all of a sudden, you got uh, hit by a car, you are no more. So your parents take the dead body, put it in front of their homes and they are crying and they are getting ready to put you to rest, uh, Hindu final rituals. The other Muslim party can come back and uh, demand the judge to stop 
your cremation and uh, they will say that uh, this is my lover, my fiance who died and uh, he's a Muslim because he has just converted to Islam and he should be given uh, Muslim foreigner right. He's no, no more Hindu. Why you are giving crema Hindu cremation? Because in, according to Islam, touching the fire is sin. It's only Allah's ra role to give you fire, not human beings. And judge will approve it. Yes, uh, where is the document? Yes, this Imam, his statement that he is a Muslim and Muslim should be, it's logical. American judge will say Muslim should be given the Muslim burial. So even your parents and your wish was a different wish, you will be put in this coffin and you will be rotting in that grave. You may be kicking in that grave uh, that damn it, why did I do this? I mean, you may want to go meet uh, Krishna in your end life. But here you will go and meet Muhammad and uh, all other his buddies over there. Was there a dream? So bring up, explain it this way. As I said, one child custody battle, judge will not buy into you. The second point I raised that uh, give, give this like, scenario, you died and even American judge will say, no, you cannot have, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, Hindu cremation. You will have the Muslim. So conversion has a lot of legal ramifications. And again, just explain them. There is nothing to gain. Why you want to, I mean, what, what do you have to gain for it other than your weakness to speak out against injustice? And further, when you convert, what you are doing is you are, that person is a religious fanatic. You are just feeding his religious fanatism. Meaning he will say, wow, now you converted. So he will expect one thing more. Now he will expect one thing more. Tell them that, look, I'm talking, I always tell, I'm married for 42 years. You know, as a, hus as a husband, I always keep on, not intentionally, but keep on pressing my luck on my wife and she keeps on being more and more submissive. I mean, I wish. And then she ultimately lost, buddy, stop it here. And then buddy, stop it here. And then I do dishes and cleaning the floor and, all seen kind of thing, uh, what man is not supposed to do it. But you know, it's a wife's job. It's, it's a spouse job to make the other party realize. So explain them that uh, by submitting, doing irrational thing, you are just putting yourself in grave. You are just digging uh, trouble for your married life. So uh, stand behind, this is what I am. This is what I will stay here. Take it or leave it. If you don't like it, get lost. Other important point you raise, uh, Mandraji, is uh, how do you initiate the discussion? That is a very vital. First, create the image that you are not biased. As soon as you meet, you know, what you start doing is you tell them that, you know, I, I mean, let's say that boy is uh, uh, Jayesh. Jayesh, you know, I understand. Dilip Bhai. Yes. Uh, somebody like Mahendra, who comes from Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America, right? He, by default, title is biased, irrespective of how neutral we talk. Very true, but at the same token, it's not. There is no label put on your face. It's a, you are talking to somebody one to one on the phone or this one. You can always uh, present it that. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to lie. You may have certain ideology, but here you have to keep in mind that you have some higher objective there. You don't have to cuff out everything. For example, that example I gave you, that doctor has an intention to take you, have surgery done so he can make money out of you. That understand, that's your intention, ultimate intention. But at least show them, yes, hi, nice meeting you. How are you doing? How was your day? Everything is going good. Let's see your left work check. Meaning go through a proper steps what you could till you reach to that surgery stage. Yes, I understand your surgery. Objective is to make $10,000 on that surgery. Understand that. But you don't have to cough out on the very first second. So that's what I'm saying. So again, back to, so you say that I know you live in America, actually talk in their language, say that, you know, your life is a lot difficult than we had in India. We did, you have to face two cultures. You try to say something to your parents. They don't understand what's going on in real world. And uh, I feel your pain. And what, you know, I will, if necessary, I will talk to your parents. 
And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, interfaith marriage may not be bad. You know, I met uh, somebody who is, whatever great interfaith marriage experience you may have seen, tell them it's possible. And uh, it's, so I will help you out. Let's walk stages. So once at least start, do basically do whatever for the other party to win in the trust and make them talk. More they talk, more times they talk. And again, keep in mind that they say, okay, let's meet for uh, one hour. Uh, keep in mind that this is just a start. So don't think it's the end. So you don't have to tell everything what you want to say the first time. Just spend enough time, like the doctor back to example, just have the lab test done and end it right there. Let the, and then later on, call them back and just like lab test, you know, I saw your cholesterol numbers are higher. Just like says, you know, a week later, call that boy, girl, whatever you consider it. Say, you know, I talk, uh, I, I was thinking about that you said these things. Can you explain what does that mean? Bring up a small point what they bring up. Bottom line, whatever you do, the conversation has to go on and on and on and on. Keep in mind that the conversation will go on for six months. Every time you talk to them, your most objective is the conversation don't have to be cut off. It has to keep going. So I know you will find out. And again, it, consultation is a different thing than being a believer in whatever. And that's why I'm saying that like uh, I did it at Mount Rushmore, get engaged in discussion with variety of youths, many interfaith couples, and uh, you yourself will know what works and what does not work. And that I cannot explain you enough what it needs to be. Because I mean, I've been working for 16 years in my early life, I have a, uh, <laughs> in my early life, I was so much getting, I thought I'm getting a lot of knowledge and it's so clear in my mind. And I bother many of my friends and relatives, including my wife to help. Oh my God, here this guy comes and they know exactly what I'm going to tell. So, and exactly that's what you will end up doing it. So don't do what I did, started doing it because I went with the preconceived motion and assume. So get in discussion with a lot of people and you, you, you will find out your own way. Next question, please. Dilip Bhai, this is Dilip Thate. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure, please. Okay. Well, you, you were very thorough in presenting. Thank you very much. Uh, picked up a lot of things. Um, uh, most of our activities are likely to be in the United States, right. uh, in North America. And uh, you were talking about special marriage laws. To my knowledge, US law prohibits polygamy and it's applicable to all religious, all, all people, regardless of religion. Am I correct? Very true. Okay. In America, there is only one marriage and uh, that is a secular oh. marriage, what you register. Yeah. America Fair does enough. not care what other marriage is, however you do, that's your own personal business. But on that Fair point, enough. you need to remind a couple that yes, that is given in America, but at the same token, if you do Nika, let's say then couple says, okay, we had a registered marriage and then we will have a Hindu wedding and we'll have a Muslim wedding. Hindu wedding, I don't think uh, American laws consider that Hindu wedding as that uh, Muslim party converted to Hinduism. I don't think that's the way I understood it. But Islamic wedding requires a Sahada conversion and you have to go to a mosque in front of Imam. It, it get documented that now onward you are Muslim. And there is only black or white. You are a Muslim or you are not a Muslim. Okay, so be clear. So once you take a Sahada, you are, but so my, according to Islamic court, so my point is, uh, uh, Dilipji, your point is, yes, there is only secular marriage, but if you have a religious marriage, if you have a, tell the other party, I will have a nikah, I don't have no problem, nikah meaning uh, the wedding, I don't have any problem, I will not do sahadat, do what you want. I think, and, uh, I mean, by the question is, is the, is the sahada or whatever recognized in the US court of law? Right. Yes. Sahada means. No, but I mean by the my the question was that uh, since there's only one type of wedding marriage here in the United States, mm -hmm. if the example you gave after death, for instance, 
uh, if the individual chooses cremation, regardless of that individual's religion, the law will honor that rather than what is the traditional thing. Am I right? Uh, it seems like you are a lawyer. You are, you are very right. Uh, but in my scenario, is, my scenario is not applicable. If that person sign a print, uh, if they sign a will that I will be go finally as uh, according to Hindi cremation then uh, this sahadat has no meaning. Judge says, forget it. His wish was to be uh, having a cremation and that's in his will. But my point is, have you written that will? If you did not return a will, there is nothing, you, you have not uh, spell out anything. Then this sahadat uh, conversion will uh, come in a way. Bottom line is when you are consulting with youths, tell them why you want to get in this legal trouble anyway, even if it is not. I, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, and one last point sure. was on your slide, you mentioned Jacob, had, sorry, Abraham had Jacob uh, and Rebecca. you wrote Israel. I think it's Ishmael, unless I misread it. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a, Ishmael's uh, later, his name become Jacob. No, no. Uh, Jacob became Israel. Uh, Jacob became Ish Ishmael from Ishmael started Islam. So, so on your slide, it's a major error because the Muslims will never accept that they came from Israel. And if your, your slide, if you can display it right now, your slide shows to my recollection. Again, I could be wrong. Yeah. I might have misread it, but that's a major correction you need to make. Yeah. If, it is, if, if my, uh, my recollection is correct, uh, that... Uh, the Abraham had two boys, one earlier older boy from her is uh, Lady uh, you know, Dasi, if Ishmael. you will. Uh, that was Ishmael. Correct. And the second one was Jacob. Right. And Jacob was later renamed as Israel. Correct. So these are all Jewish uh, lineage goes to Jacob, whereas the Muslim lineage goes to Ishmael. And I don't uh, know what your slide says. Can you check? Yes. And tell me. Nope. Uh, you are uh, again. I am saying you are a lawyer as well as you are a well-read person too. So no, that is very true. So Abraham had uh, uh, again repeating exactly what Dilipji said. Abraham has two sons: uh, this uh, Ismail and uh, Jacob. And uh, Jacob becomes part of the Christians and uh, Jews and Muslim. Uh, Jews and uh, Christians and uh, Ismail. Uh, Ismail is Ismail, Ismaili side becomes uh, Muslim. Again, uh, whatever I put it on, those apostles, they are not a lineage. It's not this person's son or this. These are just individual name I put it on. So I did not put on arrows that it's not from this become this and this one. And further, I have not even uh, put on my slides, uh, Ismail. The, uh, I did not even put on there. So because... Uh, no, you put on Jacob and Israel. I yeah, think you correct. should put on Jacob and Ishmael. No, no, I have not even put on a smile. No, you oh, should. On my slide. And uh, the reason being that uh, this is just a uh, two explaining point. The Muslims believe that uh, uh, they don't, when, when we say that uh, uh, Muhammad is the one who started is, uh, uh, Muslim faith, Islamic faith, this is no, that's not true. Islamic faiths, everybody were Muslims. Everybody were Muslims. It's only, and that's why they don't say convert to Islam. This is revert to Islam. And uh, the belief, as I, Dilipji said, it's uh, Ismail's, uh, they had both two sons and Ismail's side becomes the, Muhammad is a lineage of that Ismail side, which is uh, true. Uh, and by the way, I did do my homework and I wrote my comments to you about what Aditi's parent could have done. Right. But we are all parents, and uh, uh, Amit uh, Dilip Bhai, uh, all said and done, we can do the best we can, but with the environment that we live in, our kids are going to find a, a non-Hindu mate, many of them, as you showed in the, your statistics. And to my knowledge, 
majority many of my daughter's friends have married uh, christian boys and they don't give a hoot about the religion so they are raising their children as hindus and okay. some of the male friends have married white girls and these uh, male friends don't give a hoot about uh, religion so their wives are raising the children that they they were raised whether they are christian or jewish so looks like mother raises the children uh, and the fathers don't care less <laughs> very true good observation uh, that's why i mean uh, uh, one this... second is that is that true as well in uh, muslim faith no that um... is not my observation in muslim okay. faith it is very very dominant by islam okay thank you uh mahendra ji in islam everything goes to islam is there either it's a boy or that girl like uh, faruqi girl which i explain everything goes to islam there is no way around the reason being that uh, when a muslim marries uh, non muslim their whole community umma and uh, everybody will be really pressuring the parents keep on asking is the other party going to convert is the other party going to convert i mean they keep on i was uh, getting my hair cut done the the barber was uh, muslim and i uh, uh, learned from her that somebody married uh, muslim married a hindu and they were all curious whether she converted and then she find it out yes hindu has converted i mean now everybody feels now really oh, wow that's good finally get thing get done so where was this no, experience Uh, what is the point i'm sorry where was this experience it uh, doesn't matter no no but i mean the the, the barber shop that you're talking about is in that america. the bar- in america in america us okay yes. okay yeah correct in us so uh my point is first of all there is a whole community feels it's so vital not to add uh, non muslims into their umma the community so that's a community on top of it as soon as you go to islamic nikah you need an imam and there is no imam in the world who will perform islamic nikah wedding of non hindu to a non muslim to a muslim because as, uh, because they are invalidating quran 221 i mean anybody will challenge quran 221 are you following it or not except now i learn one exceptions and that is uh, the ismaili people and again in uh, houston they have a major uh, ismailis are there all over and ismaili has uh, exception and that ismaili imam will perform a hindu muslim wedding and they will not uh, ask hindu party to convert so hindu and muslim can actually remain married which is not possible in any other things except ismaili also will insist on raising the children in islamic faith only so ultimately it will go to islam if they have ways around now again this is not a i mean this is not a sanatan satya ultimate truth actually in my mandir there is a lady muslim lady married a hindu and she has converted to i mean i don't know whether she has converted but she comes to our mandir all the time uh a week uh, in a week before i had a presentation with kali dasi uh and that show is it's it's on my youtube and that kali dasi was muslim at her age 22 or something or later on at her by her own choice she decided that she wants to be a hindu so and she married a hindu now so kali dasi is a hindu point is there is no hard and fast that these only things happens it's all matter of probability so when you are consulting you have to keep all options in mind and uh, as a matter uh, hindu christian marriages i tell you there are so many wonderful wonderful one of my best friends uh, daughter married uh, a christian guy they have uh, baptized their children and i told them wait, wait, what are you doing you are baptizing your children but now doesn't matter uh, the hindu girl it's a hindu girl here in this case she is so religious and uh, so following uh, she baptized the children 
but now she's bringing them to mandir every day does the puja and these and that thing point is it's not what label you put it on like dayan and saraswami dayan and saraswati ji told me from the one year of child is one year old you install them the hindu true hindu value and if you have installed the person the child has hindu value into it every day doing puja seeing the value to eating the prasad and then only go i mean how are we or also more logically you have to explain the hindu ultimate values if not those rituals how are we if you have installed true hinduism in your son or daughter doesn't matter let them have a, let them label put on whatever label on them convert them except those legal points so see there are many it's not a one thing you can tell yeah this is the answer go follow it then that's why i'm saying that who are party you consult to uh, keep keep learning from them keep hearing them and you will find it out that is no two cases same and that's why it's very vital as a consultant to understand just like back to that example there are no patient two patients same you have to know this patient whether he needs bypass nope this patient only needs stem nope this patient does not need anything he just need is a lipido that's it so you are a doctor now next question so uh, this is ashish uh, yeah. i was going to ask a simple question uh, do you suggest that uh, when you consult you um, talk to both of them together or uh, what is your suggestion and a related question is in you know in case of uh, the other faiths that like uh, you showed uh, in your slide that uh, it will be a heresy or you know um, in, in other words you shouldn't be married to a non that particular faith Uh, and at the same time you are saying that uh, you should be uh, it, it's a equal you choose equality aren't you then um, you know you you are asking a person of that particular faith to go against their faith in some sense uh, that uh, is, is that true are you you are asking somebody not to follow his faith in the in in that sense let me answer the second question first Muslim Christians and Jews will say that you cannot raise children in two faiths because children will get confused. How can you teach them? Uh, you start teaching them Hinduism. That means you are taking us out of Islam, Christianity. That's against our faith and all that. You know, this is an interfaith marriage. These are who you are consulting is some two professionals uh, living gotcha. in big city and all that. just tell them that's the other party's problem that's not your problem that's not a hindu's problem that's not and again you are hindu or you are who are you are uh you and if you are let's say consulting christian and muslims tell them what is more logical is equality no not more logical you want to be submissive submit to some e irrational logic do you see the logic barack obama he was not confused person he was just perfectly i i mean i thought he was a not confused person he's he's just perfectly fine so why can't your son or daughter have an option what is wrong taking your son or daughter show that look this is the quran says this is what bible says this is the mosque is teaching this is mandir teaching this is mandir uh, church teaching teach them both give them the good value for them and at age 18 let them decide whatever they want it see if you present it this way invariably whoever you are consulting this is yes ashish okay mr khan you make sense even though your name may be khan i want to discriminate based on your name i'll give you a benefit of doubt that maybe there are many people who will feel that oh there is some guy who is uh, sneaking in here <laughs> i will give you doubt that who you are to hindu or doesn't matter point is you to don't get stuck on what is presented to you look at the go deeper 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 understanding situation okay and that's... ultimately it has to be equality respect for each other sharing mm. faiths pluralism american values i mean those are all jargon points and that's the selling points 
and there is no way any hindu boy or girl or even if you are christian consulting muslim and christians they will say no 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 i believe in inequality no way and if religion if the other some party let's say muslim parties insist on no nope, this is against uh, i have problem that's taking me out of islam then why don't you follow quran uh, 6011 yeah. to start yeah. with got you i mean don't even get in dating you should be lowering your gaze walk away from this relationship follow allah's message and uh, marry to somebody who is hijabi to begin Good with point. who is performing namaz five times a day go to your mosque you will find somebody and right away that guy said <clears throat> i don't want to marry to hijabi who i mean they don't want to marry to somebody who is muslim guys invariably in today's in college dorm you go i, I mean i if, if you have a machine to understand You, you go ask them that do you want to marry somebody from your mosque who is performing namaz five times a day wearing hijab and all that so you are you kidding no way i want even date that kind of person they want somebody who is really nice open minded flashy uh, wearing short clothes and jazzy they want to marry somebody whom they are not uh that's for dating they want somebody else but when uh, marriage they want to convert them to somebody else you know one hindu girl made a really great statement and is they say is all hindu uh, hindu girl saying all hindu boys you know they want uh, glamorous uh, girl for dating but when it comes to marriage they want a stupid girl to marry meaning stupid meaning the one who will uh, says okay now we are hindu hindu now <laughs> my parents are coming so you uh, be respectful to them uh, i will not enter the kitchen you do the cleaning you make sure the cook food is ready uh, three times like mother was doing and serving on the dinner table and you serve so but they don't want to uh, for dating they want a glamorous girl point is boys and girls expectations at dating time may be different versus uh, in reality of life That's and that's when you are consulting make them uh, reminded remind them that glamour time uh, this dating time glamour words and this uh, meaning <laughs> has no meaning uh, the guy may be saying i'll give uh, life for you then no no don't give up your life just make sure you kick your imam out that's it do only that simple things for me and they said no 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 i cannot kick my imam out you have to marry by a sahada but you just say that you will uh, give your life out well that's uh, i can give my life out but still we have to have a sahada so just it's it's your job as a consultant to make them to reality oh. got you thank you i think your time is up right so, yeah uh yes time is up and if you have any burning questions please ask also reach out to me anytime okay uh for any personal consultations i will share these videos and also definitely take one step further think out of yourself as a box think yourself as a consultant actually you will find it lot of fun when you start discussing with people and you realize oh my god people are really uh out of their mind and if you are talking to hindu parents they have a 16 year old daughter and they start making irrational comments even though you endorse it that your daughter should not date a muslim you know just hack off it just as a consultant challenge them yeah. why not what's wrong with that even though you don't believe it because your point is to educate them your point is exactly. to educate yourself as a consultant you want to train yourself so for them use people as a guinea pig start getting so i know time is up uh 10:57 all right thank all you of them uh please uh, carry this on further you are in touch i will also assign you question answers please reply it back and i will send you a certificate it's just a paper please. but still it will make you feel good that you make please. one step thank you um, thank uh, you dilip ji will you check your uh, chat chat messages because i have sent some private messages to you I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know. I, it will take. Uh, there are a lot of them, and uh, maybe I can uh, save it and. Uh, uh, That's I all right. We don't have to answer now. All I'm saying is, will you check it? 
will. I will definitely okay, chat here. Yeah. All right. Namaste. Okay, so uh, we are officially ending the meeting here. And uh, if anybody wants to hang on here, you are welcome. I know I took you a long time. And thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank all you, right, Dilip Mayer, everybody. Thank you very much. Great, great talking to you. Excellent informational session. Thank you, and keep in touch. Great. Thank you. Thank Namaste. you.